Good morning students. Today we will study about anatomy of anus. Anus or anal canal. See here you can see this is the anal canal. So what is anal canal? It is the terminal part of digestive system or gut. That means it is the end portion of gut. We know that gut is divided into foregut, midgut, hindgut. Foregut ends where? At the major duodenal papilla. And from there, the midgut starts. And midgut, it will end at the junction of right two-third and left one-third of transverse colon. And from that portion, that, that is the beginning of hind gut so the left one third of transverse colon descending colon sigmoid colon rectum anal canal this is hind gut foregut i have also told you in previous classes that the chief artery of foregut is celiac trunk midgut superior mesenteric artery and hindgut inferior mesenteric artery so by the time we reach this portion we come to the rectal artery superior rectal artery inferior rectal artery which are going to superior rectal artery is a branch of inferior mesenteric artery so superior mesen uh, superior rectal vein will definitely drain into inferior mesenteric vein you keep this in mind now i come back to anal canal first of all it is the terminal that means the end most part yani akhri structure hai digestive system ka anal canal kaha present hai pelvis mein but pelvis mein kaha where in the pelvis see it is present below the rectum this fold you can see this transverse fold i had taught you in rectum that the rectum mucosa is having folds, transverse folds, upper, middle and lower fold. Here you can see those folds. So this lower fold of the rectum, that is the end of the rectum and the beginning of anal canal. So it starts at the end of rectum and it ends at the anal opening to the exterior. But this is only morphological, isn't it? We should know anatomical sites. So, it begins at the junction of rectum and anus, which is present 2 to 3 cm in front of and below the end or the tip of coccyx. So, that is the beginning of anal canal. Then, its direction will be downwards and backwards and then it will open to the exterior through the anal opening which is present 4 cm below the tip of coccyx. So this is the anatomical uh, position you can say and on both sides of anal canal there is ischio anal fossa, right ischio anal fossa left issue anal fossa so issue anal fossa is mainly consisting of fat isn't it so it is a potential space it gives us um, uh, it is not an organ it's a space will, so that it can be distended and if we see from the external area we will say that the anal canal is lying in the perineal triangle perineal triangle so that it is present from the perineal body to the end of coccyx okay so this much you have understood i will again repeat in very short anal canal is the terminal part of hind gut or the whole digestive system it is present in perineal triangle on both sides are 
right and left ischio anal fossa it begins 2 to 3 cm below and in front of tip of coccyx and then it traverses a path which is going downwards and backwards and opens in the anal opening which is present 4 cm below the tip of coccyx it begins otherwise it begins at the end of rectum okay so this much you know about the anal canal now the dimensions its length is 3.8 cm approximately but you can see so many changes are there so many structures are there so that is why we divide this 3.8 cm into three parts upper 15 mm middle 15 mm and the lower 8 mm long parts so we have divided the anal canal from inter interior into three parts upper 15 cm middle 15 cm lower 8 cm now definitely if we have divided there must be some different features also what are the features see this is the upper 15 cm here you can see so many columns isn't it these are columns of morgagni so anal columns of morgagni are present in the upper upper part or upper 15 mm of anal canal the lower end of these columns see they are continuous to each other so by becoming continuous to each other they are forming anal valves they are acting as anal valves and the upper portion is having sinuses so these are anal sinuses below this you can see this can also be called a pectinate line because it is all present in a line this line is also called pectinate line which is marked by anal valves the middle portion the middle 15 mm of anal canal is below the pectineal the pectinate line and so we also call this whole area as pectin okay the area below the pectinate line is called pectin and below it you can see here white line this transverse line this is the white line or line of hilton or hilton's line why is it important it is divide i mean it's the demarcating line between middle and the lower portion of anal canal from internal side see we are talking about the interior but the biggest difference is the epithelium which lies the upper part and the middle part is mucous membrane but the lining membrane of the lower 8 mm part of the anal canal is skin and as skin contains sweat and sebaceous gland this area also contains sweat glands and sebaceous glands so here this was the special difference why we have divided it into three parts now relations of anal canal when we talk in anatomy we should know the position of the organ we should know the dimension of the organ we should know the relation then arterial supply venous drainage nervous supply lymphatic drainage function and applied anatomy so the relations see what can come in front of anal canal just imagine perineal body that is why it was lying in the perineal triangle so in front means anteriorly it is related to perineal body and in males it is related to bulb of penis and membranous urethra but in females apart from the perineal body it is related to the lower part of vagina and posteriorly it is related to coccyx it is related to coccyx but what is present on the lateral sides ischio anal fossa 
so these were the relations of main relations of anal canal now the arterial supply we should come to the arterial supply it is supplied by superior and inferior rectal artery okay simple the rectum upar tha to rectum ke do arteries mein isko supply kar diya clear now the venous drainage here it is very important because that will give us a very important reason for knowing about the diseases in applied anatomy upper part i mean the upper one third part upper we have divided into three parts isn't it the first part it is drained by internal rectal venous plexus so internal venous plexus the venous you can see so many veins here so these are the internal venous plexus which will finally drain into inferior uh, sorry superior rectal vein superior rectal vein is going to drain in the inferior mesenteric vein and inferior mesenteric vein superior mesenteric vein celiac trunk they all are going to connect to the portal vein portal vein is the vein which is going to open in the liver and so it forms the portal circulation don't forget this otherwise all other veins of the body they open in the either inferior vena cava or superior vena cava depending on the position so that is called systemic circulation but in the liver we will call it portal circulation so the upper one third is drained by the inferior internal sorry internal rectal plexus which is going to be drained by the superior rectal vein but but you can see this also connected to the external rectal plexus external rectal plexus is going to be drained by the systemic circulation it is not going to be drained by the inferior mesenteric vein so now these plexus are actually forming porta caval anastomosis yani anastomosis matlab jab koi do cheez jud jaye ek dusre se that is anastomosis so the internal rectal plexus it is going to drain in the inferior mesenteric vein which is a part of portal circulation it will drain into portal vein isn't it so it is going to the portal circulation but this plexus is also connected to external rectal plexus which is present outside these are the sphincter muscles okay sphincter muscles so external are present here external rectal plexus is present here that will drain into systemic circulation that means inferior vena cava so when these two internal and external rectal plexus are connected venous plexus are connected they form anastomosis between portal circulation and systemic circulation so why this is important because if there is a case of cirrhosis of liver any problem in the liver like cirrhosis the portal hypertension is caused the blood pressure normally we measure in the arteries but portal hypertension means that the blood of portal vein is not going forward isn't it so what will happen there will be backlogging so blood in the portal circulation or the portal all the veins which are draining in the portal vein they will become engorged dilated and if this happens this blood has no place to go but that is dangerous for the life so nature has provided us a lot of places where porta systemic anastomosis is present that means if 
the blood through the portal vein is not going forward then it will go backward through these anastomotic sites and it will reach the systemic circulation and reach the inferior vena cava so that the circulation goes on although the liver is not functioning well the blood it was supposed to go in the liver it is not going there but it will remain in the circulation there will be problem definitely because liver is the metabolic center its function will be definitely not taken advantage of but still the circulation will go on that is the reason why porta systemic anastomosis are present so this is one site of porta systemic anastomosis now these veins that you can see in the internal rectal plexus these are also very important in production of internal piles see i have started speaking about the uh, clinical part that means applied anatomy because it was related to it i had to explain it right now otherwise it would become difficult later on so you know about the piles piles are internal piles and external piles internal piles are produced by engorgement of these veins in this upper one third part of anal canal there are three sites 3 o'clock 7 o'clock 11 11 o'clock position which are the main sites for the production of internal piles but apart from these five more sites are present these form ring like see this is these are at the same level at the level of these morgagni anal columns so these are present all around so if we see that way then there are five more secondary sites for the piles but the what is more important point that you have to keep in mind is that internal piles they don't give any pain neither are they visible externally to the patient so the patient may not be aware of it and the patient may be losing blood in the stool in the form of occult blood means hidden blood not frank blood so the patient will not know about it and will have chronic anemia so if you ever get a chronic anemia patient do ask about his uh, fecal defecation uh, habits and give uh, do ask him to do stool test for occult blood and if possible do proctoscopy so that you can see the prolapsed veins here so that the internal piles are seen by it by proctoscopy or by pr examination but if you want to see it's the proctoscopy now external piles external when i have talked about internal piles i will have to at this stage itself talk about external piles external piles are formed by these anal veins anal veins are present in this lower one third so these anal veins are having lot of branches and they prolapse if a person is 